I've often been, you know, I do an indie music show, and I've often said that music is not only a universal language, but is in the indie music world, it's, indie music is kind of, a, you know, the music industry's best kept unintentional secret. And but it does. It speaks to your soul, and there's so many things that music can do in in terms of healing that nothing else can. It bridges people like nothing else can. So I think that what you have started here is there's certainly something that you know is is not only inspirational, but it is something that is beneficial to so many. So I, I'm very happy that someone has come along to do something like this. And and my question for you guys is. Um, is there are there any new projects in the works to expand on what you're currently doing to kind of build upon um, to take it to another level? Well, Michael teased me and said he had stuff to talk about that we don't know about. So now's ah. your time. <laughs> Wait, when, when, when did I put that? When, when, did, when, when did I put my foot in my mouth? When did that? We, we do definitely. We do definitely have ideas. I don't know that we're ready to. To, to talk about it, we're still in like developing our yeah. ideas. But I, you know, some some of the um, to, to better to better understand, I think what we're doing it is it's a day by day process, and it's a it's a person by person process. So I think the way that we want to expand it is obviously we want more people to know about music therapy. We want more people to you know we want more people to know about the science of music education. And so we're really trying. To, we're working with different artists. Um, you know, we're really excited. We're working with this band Howl and Benz. Uh, mm-hmm. that just put out their new EP. And, and they're a great group of guys, and, and we're going to start, you know, booking for them and managing them and, and getting and getting their word out and, and really trying to, again, tap into a live music community that, that, that's hungry for, for learning and hungry for, for wanting to experience music on many different levels. And, and they have – their audience is amazing. They have great people that, that support them. And so we're really trying to work with bands, not work against bands, um, not work, you know, so, so we, we can have the exposure and they can do all the workforce and that kind of thing. But we're really trying to build partnerships. And I think that's the best way that, that, that we can put, you know, how, we're, how we're, we really want to expand this is to, is to work with people that are interested in the same things. You know, this is our project that we're starting, but there's, there's lots of people that are doing you, – you guys are obviously all, you know, experiencing music in different levels. So, um, you know, it's, it's about meeting those people and, and building the relationships from a mutual perspective so it's reciprocal. And, and, and people aren't taking advantage of each other. And, and the things that benefit are, are the kids that, that are in these music programs the patients that are in these music therapy programs and the performers and, and everybody else if those things if those if those three things are met then everybody's going to benefit from it so it really is about networking and working with the right people and expanding the message to, to really places that it doesn't exist and that's that's here in the United States and that's certainly across the globe um, you know th- this is where we're, music therapy itself is very limited here just in terms of only having 5500 music therapists in the United States so we're really trying to reach communities and networks where this doesn't exist. So radio shows like these and programs like these where we're not confined to just our regional locations, we have an opportunity to talk with people anywhere right now. So it really is about about building these opportunities and and building this exposure to to just reach the parts of the globe and the parts of this country in the United States that, that don't know about music therapy or the benefits of music altogether. Yes, and I'd say that you know once the the film is released, we have um, you know this this vision that you know, our <clears throat> our company's slogan is from the ground up, and we'd like to think that we can inspire through the film and having you know a few different styles of release. We'd like to have a theatrical release, but we'd also like to have an educational version that we can put into middle schools and high schools, um, give to guidance counselors and let budding musicians know that there is this profession called music therapy. And so, you know, it's not just about being a music educator or being a musician or in a band, all great things, but there is this third option, music, you know, music therapy. And um, so we, we like to think that having that, um, you know, from the ground up perspective, these, these kids saying to colleges and universities, we would like to have this program. So building that demand from the high schools into to the universities, and then once they're graduating uh, from these music therapy programs, then music therapy clinics will uh, sprout up organically all over the place, and you know provide um, you know collaborative um, opportunities to speech therapy and physical therapy, occupational therapy, and other health um, programs. So you know that's what we we're trying to 
we are brainstorming ways that we can um, expand that and help that organic um, that organic way of growing music therapy through our film. Well, I, I definitely think you guys are, are on to something, and it sounds like what you have coming down the pipes moving forward is going to be very exciting um, for everyone that's involved with the project. And I love the fact that, you know, it's been in the schools and because music is so important to kids, and I think it's one of the few things that we, we still have that we need to hold on to in that regard. So I wish you all both very much the best with it. Thank you so much, Dawn. We really appreciate the question and, and you calling in and everything. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Uh, thank you, Dawn. You're certainly welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Dawn. Oh, thank, thank you, Dawn. Dawn. Thank you, Sabina. You can go back to your room now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, do you see yourselves going, um, you know, anywhere in the world at any point in time? Like, is that a future project that you'd like to do to expand on what you're already doing? Yes, actually, we've been invited to a number of places already. I mean, we've been invited to places, you know, like the U.K. and Ireland. We've been invited mm-hmm. to Iran and, and places like China. And, and, you know, so it's really run the gamut on, on where people have invited us to go to or where our State Department will allow us to go to. So, You're right. <laughs> um, you know, it'll, it's definitely going to be a challenge. But the goal is um, we're going to try to hit up a few locations uh, before the the – before we wrap filming with the case for music, but we will be visiting various places around the world because we are a film production company and there are different projects that we have already started talking about and wanting to work on and, and those involve global perspectives. So, you know, we've there's there's a there's a lot of different music programs right now going on in Africa, um the Uganda, uh Kenya and uh, Nigeria specifically have contacted us about and you know they're doing amazing things with music and the kids that, that are being you know that, that are losing their parents to AIDS, where some of these countries are over 50% of population has AIDS right now, and, and the kids don't necessarily. So, you know, they're trying to use music programs as ways to get these kids into more, you know, functional situations, more structured situations. So there are stories that, that aren't being told right now that, that we hope to get to all of them. We really do, and that's what that's what I mean by those 30 minutes. We, we, can't, we can't sacrifice we can't sacrifice the 30 minutes with anybody because everybody's story is the most important story to them. And it's important that we respect right. that. That's respect to music. Because again, like we've been saying this entire interview, it's different for everybody. So how they interact with it and appreciate it, we've got to really reflect that. So we're, we're very optimistic and hopeful that we'll, we'll, we'll get to the locations that we want to and really be able to, to put a camera on these stories because it's not so much about what we talk about. It's what you're, you are going to see as the, as the audience. It's what you're going to feel when you see these kids and these adults interact with music in, in so many dynamic and, and fun ways. And, and when you see the results and, and, and just see it for yourself, it's not going to be about what we say or about what we need to pitch or anything like that. It's going to be you absorbing the information and being able to process it on your own in your own time. Sure, it's just like with the video for YDEF. I mean, I can talk about it until I'm blue in the face, but it really is about experiencing it and seeing that video, seeing it happening. That's where where people can really connect to it. So I think, you know, with the case for music and for, with the films that will follow, that's what we really hope to do is just to connect with people. Is there any type of date you see that the documentary is going to be done, like the end of the year, or do you want to have it in sooner or well, is it just by the seat of your pants <laughs> <laughs> well I, the goal is to finish filming this summer and then we'll head into post-production which is probably um, it's where all the magic happens so we'd like to give um, enough time to make sure that the, the product you know that the film is the best possible film that it can be, mm-hmm. um, you know, out of respect for everyone who has taken a chance on us, you know, who knew us as at Rising Terra or, you know, Terra Rising on Facebook or whatever it is. Um, you know, they, they really trusted us and took a chance on us, and we definitely want to make sure that we do justice to this story, and it's such an important topic that we want to make sure that we handle it with care. Um, so we do hope to release the film uh, at the beginning of next year. That would be the goal, but, um, but you know, we stay open to, to all right. the opportunities that are coming to us and 
again, with the goal of having the very best film that we can make. Right. And I look forward to it. So is this something that you're going to – how are you going to present the documentary to us to watch? Is this going so to go in theaters have- or on um, where? <laughs> So we're going to submit to film festivals, um, at, you know, to film festivals that have documentaries, and we will have theatrical releases for the film, and we'll also have. So the plan is to have three formats: the, the theatrical format, um, the educational format, and then we do hope to pitch it to um, to television as well. So to have that format as well. So I would I love to see that on yes. TV, especially like something like PBS, you know. Yes, mm-hmm. there are plenty of, of wonderful channels, wonderful outlets for information like this and films like this. So we're really excited. Yeah. And, and again, the, the quality of it and the message has to be correct because I think through, throughout time, I, mean, I think it's easy to say that music heals. Okay, I, I think that's a term that, that gets thrown around a lot, and it's a, it's a great catchphrase because it's true, but it's not, it's not universal in how it heals. And I, and I think that's what we're trying to show is that mm-hmm. this, isn't so, this isn't so much about I feel bad, oh, I'll feel good. This is, this is about an autistic child not being able to communicate with their parents and, all, you know, and, and by doing and interacting with, with music therapy, they're able to develop communication mechanisms that allow them to interact not only with their families but with the world around them. And, and what we've learned throughout this process is that right now we, a, 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 a couple uh, here in the United States that has um, a, a child with special needs the divorce rate is 80%. And so just by being able to communicate with that child, it's not just helping the interaction of the child and the parents, but it's actually helping the parents themselves be able to interact and be able to work better together. So there's a lot of other benefits that come from, from this, and so we're really trying to, to define what music heals actually means. And, and trying to give that more content and, and, and more, uh, I guess, substance to it. And, and rather just kind of throw it around as a term. But no, music, it really does. Like Alzheimer's patients are benefiting this. People, and, you know, people that have lost loved ones that are, that are grieving are using music to write songs and, and being able to do these things to get through it with a, with a professional music therapist because the process is important. Music doesn't work with everybody. So there is a certain process. Some people prefer percussion instruments. Other people prefer strings. Some people uh, react to, to singing versus not singing. So th- there are so many different things, and so it really is important that, that, that not that we label things, but that we understand that there are different processes for things that all lead to the same end, which is a healthy, well-rounded individual person. Yes, we take the title of our film seriously, The Case for Music. I mean, yeah. it, it's a heavy <laughs> responsibility there, and, and um, we intend to make make the case for music. And I fully 1,000% believe in you guys. I think if anybody can do it, you can. Thanks a lot for that. Really appreciate it. You're you're welcome. For our listeners, if you'd like to check out more on Terra Rising, you can go to their website. It's Terra, T-E-R-R-A dash rising dot com. Um, Their videos are on there. There's an about section, news and press, events, documentary, blog, contact if you'd like to get in touch with them, if you'd like to be part of this. Also, anybody in or around the Arlington, Virginia area, you can still buy tickets um, from the website. There's a buy your tickets today little thing you can click on for the Universal Music Care. uh, Saturday, February 23rd, 730 to 1130 p.m. at the Artisphere. And I see live music, dancing, entertainment, and fundraising, door prizes, cash bar, and more. Anything you'd like to add to that, you guys? We just really want to thank um, everybody that's involved with it, the Artist Sphere, Howland Benz, the Gray Area, Sam Maloney, uh, the Bonger Dance Team with Loveline and all of her friends, and, and just everybody that's volunteering, everybody that's already bought a ticket, everybody that is going to buy a ticket. Um, just thank you to everybody that supported us through Facebook, through Twitter, uh, the, the people that have allowed us to come into their homes, and, and every radio show host, Pam, Spine, Ken, Michelle, uh, Sharon, everybody that's, that's allowed us to grow this, to give us the time, to give us their 30 minutes. You're giving us 30 minutes, and, and, and we in turn hope to give you back back that 30 minutes by presenting an amazing film and something that respects everybody's individual interaction with music. So we really just want to thank everybody. Please contact us, Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash Tara Rising Records. Find us on, on Twitter at Rising 
Terra, C-E-R-R-A, and we love to hear from people. We love hearing other people's stories, so please feel free to interact.